But sometimes, you know, a good copywriter will, when you're at that level, you know, sometimes you do want to take a big risk and sometimes it's not going to work well at all. Other times it's going to be a huge breakthrough. You hear all the bull about marketing every day. Make your money in your sleep. My new offer is crushing it. My guru could beat up your guru. It's time to go right to the source and get the truth about marketing. With your host, the founder of CopyChief.com, Kevin Rogers. Welcome back to The Truth About Marketing. It's Kevin Rogers here, and I'm excited to interview Kim Schwalm today. Uh, Kim is one of the best uh, direct response copywriters out there, and again, a name you may have heard of, may not have uh, heard of, because uh, like our friend Marcella Allison, who was on the show recently, Kim is doing the work. She's busy doing the work. She's not one of these shameless self-promoters out there uh, desperate for attention on Facebook and other places like some people we know. Um, <laughs> but I'll tell you a funny inside story about uh, Kim as if she's not listening right now on the other line. Um, I'm with my friend Ben Settle uh, at... Uh, uh, where were we? AWA I boot camp uh, back in October, oh, and God. <laughs> uh, Ben Settle, who is uh, a um, uh, what's what I'm looking for a a posing misogynist, um, uh, <laughs> is obsessed with Kim Schwamm. We're sitting in a restaurant. She's at the next table, and he is starstruck. He he's beside himself and he says, I got to meet this woman. I talk about her all the time, uh, man. People need to know about her. There's so many women uh, in my group that would love to learn from her. She's amazing. And next thing I know, they're uh, the best of friends, but also uh, really going at it sort of politically. <laughs> and it was really fun to watch uh, all weekend. So this is the kind of clout that uh, Kim Krause Schwamm, you may know her as, um, uh, has in the business. She's been in the trenches. She, her, if you go to Kim Schwamm, that's S-C-H-A-W-L-M.com, you'll see three testimonials right there on her homepage from the heaviest hitters in the business uh, and so we're really excited to get your insights, Kim, today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for agreeing to uh, open the kimono, as it were. Oh, yes. Well, it's great to be here. And uh, I just want to correct your spelling of my last name is S-C-H-W-A-L-M. Oh. Okay, whatever but, I said. Yeah, it's, it'll that. be. I know you'll have it in the notes. So Yes, the, um, all, all the links will be there. Sorry about that. But I mean, I'm impressed you're pronouncing everything correctly. So you get an A plus for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find it just takes a minute of practice. And then it's yeah. okay. Unless it's a really crazy name. I, I struggle. But um, yeah, tell me about, let's just dive into the Ben Settle thing here. Because... Uh, I think it's interesting, uh, uh, Ben's effect on people, and your effect on him was, what I've really never seen him act like that before. Oh, tell, that's funny. Tell me how the relationship has manifested since then, because I know you're in his his little group of, uh, of uh, Yeah, I, I try to stay out of the lair, but I'm always getting tagged into things. <laughs> and so you know, you go to see what's going on, and you're like, oh my God, all this other stuff's going on. Um, but no, I, I met Ben for the first time at that dinner. And we immediately started arguing about, um, you know, he thought I was such a feminist mm -hmm. and uh, because I was offended that he was saying, oh, you got to you got to do something for the girls. And I was like, well, mm. they're women. They're not girls. And mm. then we started a whole thing on that. And then I went and ended up starting this Facebook group, which I was going to mention later, um, called the Girls Club. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so that's kind of ironic. But. Um, I did an interview with um, Misty, who's kind of his uh, VP of his layer oh. group mm -hmm. uh, back in late October. And oh. Ben has mentioned me, you know, several times in his group about the girls club. So I've gotten a number of members from there. I've gotten a number of members just have found me or people that I already knew. Oh. And um, it's just a great little community of, of women who are celebrating each other's successes and, you know, sharing insights and asking questions. And it's just a free little Facebook group that I've started you know, on the side, just to, you know, bring people together and build a community. And so uh, would you consider yourself uh, a, a feminist in regards to 
this, you know, being a woman in this business, is it like you, well, call it what you want, but you've got to really fight for everything you do because it's still somewhat a boys club or is that changing? Yeah. Well, okay. Here's, here's part of it. I think the whole thing with the girls club and what I want to do for women is to show them that women can really make it in this industry. Mm. And I want them to also the women that aren't so visible, like the ones you're talking about, like the Marcellas and the, you know, I can leave Susie Bell Terry and Allison Hancock and other people that you just don't hear about, but they are kicking butt as copywriters, right? Yeah. Carlene Angle Cole. I mean, oh, she's yeah. well known with, to the AWAI crowd, but probably yeah. not far beyond that. And so there's a lot of women who are kicking butt. I mean, when my when I have people going up against my controls or I'm going up somebody's controls, a lot of times it's a woman these days, you know. But but when I was starting out 19 years ago as a freelance copywriter. It was almost all guys. And I'll never forget when, you know, I, I don't, we're not going to do my whole life story because that would take a whole hour. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my previous life, before I became a freelance copywriter, I was uh, a marketing person for like 13 years in the, in the corporate world. So I do remember knowing and feeling what the glass ceiling was like. Um, but I, when I was at Phillips Publishing, we worked with the very top, top A-level copywriters. I mean, this was back when Gary Bensavango was writing and, you know, we, Jim Rutz, you know, was still alive and, you know, people like that. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a female copywriter named Barbara Harrison. And I don't know if you've ever heard of her and I don't know what she's doing now, but she was one of those top copywriters that came to visit Phillips one day. Like sometimes, the, you know, the top copywriter would come visit and they'd give them a little tour of the offices and they'd walk past, you know, the marketing people and then you, you get a chance to meet them and they were like, you know, like this superstar kind of person. Right. And I remember meeting Barbara Harrison and just feeling like I want to be her someday, hmm. you know? And, and that was, to me, that was really inspiring to have someone that I could look to and say, wow, she's in the big leagues and maybe someday I'll try doing that, you know? Yeah. Really cool. Uh, what was the moment when you said, I got to go after this copywriting thing. Was it like something you just find yourself, hey, I'm pretty good at this? Or <laughs> was it more like, this seems really hard and I'm obsessed with it? Well, copywriting was always one of the many hats I wore as a marketing person. Mm -hmm. um, I discovered just my first initial exposure was in my first marketing position, which was actually for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Maryland, marketing health insurance to seniors and to the individual market. Um, and then I got, it was a stepping stone to get my job at Phillips Publishing. And when I first went to Phillips, uh, the health and healing newsletter had just launched. There was 300,000 subscribers. So I was tasked with, um, scouting out or developing products that we could, uh, market via inserts to that huge universe. And so it was everything like soup to nuts, figure out the product, cut the deal with the joint venture, write the copy for like a four page insert, sometimes longer and throw it out there and see what worked and what didn't. Um, so, you know, I began to develop a good reputation within the company as a copywriter. After six months, we decided what these people really, really wanted on the back end was Dr. Whitaker's vitamins. And so I actually helped launch and run the Healthy Directions uh, business. I actually came up with the name Healthy Directions and, you know, wrote the copy, ran the business, had a team of people, grew it to like a $23 million subsidiary in three years, just marketing to the back end. Um, so I developed a good reputation within the company as being not just a good marketer, but a good copywriter. Mm -hmm. And I went to some other parts of the company and, um, and then I um, helped launch another supplement line for the company. And then I launched my first child <laughs> and then I came back to uh, work in yet another area. And, you know, I was just at that point, it was about, you know, I remember talking to my father who, unfortunately, he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer and he died just a few months later. But I was, you know, not feeling good about where I was. I was like, you know, I don't know. To be honest, I sort of felt like I was being a little mommy tracked. And um, so he's like, well, maybe you should check out the copywriting thing you keep talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then about four months after he passed away, I was like, you know what? I think I am going to go for it. And I got a really great uh, retainer arrangement with another supplement company in the area. I was very thankful I never had signed the no, non-compete that had been offered me like a year before. Mm. Um, I did not have the golden handcuffs on me. And um, and so I went and worked with this other company. It was a, I walked out of a six-figure job 
I was, um, the retainer arrangement guaranteed me 90% of my salary. This was only going to take half my time. So right out of the gate, I could take on more clients. And the first year, I made 50% more than I did at my job. And I was able to be at home, keep my nanny, be around, you know, with my kid, you know, take them to gym jamboree class, take them on walks, whatever, no commute, all the great benefits of freelancing. So once again, I mean, I've had 19 years of this where I've had, I've seen my kids grow up. I've been able to to be mom. I mean, I've been able to, you know, do all these things and work fewer hours as I was able to get more into royalty-based copywriting and and have the the passive income coming in. And this is something I really want to help other women be able to do. I mean, men too, obviously, but I mean, it's just been great for me as a woman and a mom to have this kind of freedom. Love it. Let me ask you something. Um, Is that going away, the ability to earn royalties? Um, No. (laughs) I mean, I guess I'm not the right person to ask. Yep. Right, because you've been that, doing, you've been that's, that's, that's been your mo well, uh, I mean, for I nineteen just, years. Yeah. That's what I. Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't say the full nineteen years, Kevin. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, the first three or four years, I really wrote mostly straight flat fee. Okay. I mean, I had to break into acquisition, long form copywriting. Mm-hmm. Um, I hadn't really done that when I was at Phillips. I'd mostly done, you know, the short inserts. I mean, the they hired the the big guns, you know, for the acquisition promos. Um, so. You know, I had a whole learning curve, which, you know, we could talk about or not, but where I and there wasn't things like AWI. There weren't people like you with Copy Chief. There weren't other groups that, you know, or people that I could find to mentor me. I wasn't anybody's copper copy cub. You know, I was kind of out on my own and I had to kind of learn it and figure it out and and try to fight to get those opportunities to write the first, you know, long form promo. But I did, and I could expand on how I did that if you like. But um, basically, I had to I had to get to that point where um, an existing client who I'd written a bunch of um, you know renewal efforts and other things that had been very successful, they said, "Let's give her a try. Let's see what she can do." Right? And um, I ended up on the second try with with them, wrote a promotion for personal finance that beat Jim Rutz's control. Wow. And that put me on the map. And then mm. Brian Kurtz, who I'd reached out to before, he couldn't call me fast enough. He's like, hey, mm. can you write for Boardroom? You yeah. know? And then um, my first project with them, Tax Hotline, I beat Paris Anthropolis's seven-year control. Holy smokes. And I became the first female copywriter to get a Boardroom control. And then so it just went from there, wow. you know? that's great. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had to... I had to, you know, it took a while to get to that point. So you didn't have a direct mentor, nobody you're, who's seeing your drafts or, you know, helping kind of like, you know, coach you or chief you. You're just on your own out there and here's the control, go beat it. Yeah, I was on my own. And I will say there's a couple people who early on did help me. Um, so one client that I wrote a my first supplement long form direct mail promo for um, the first one, it, it didn't work well. I took, I made a rookie mistake with, oh, the supplement does everything. It does this, it does that, it does this, it cures that, you know, <laughs> blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. And not focused enough, right? And so I called up uh, Bob Hutchinson, who I had met when I used to work on Jay Abraham's newsletter and um, for Phyllis Publishing. And uh, he was kind enough to do a critique with my client and myself. And he says, you know, real, what if you just focus it on one benefit? You know, it's like, oh, aha, why don't we do that? Mm-hmm. So I wrote this joint promo just based on a lot of the same copy I had, but steering it on, on joint mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, this thing did great. He, my client was able to mail it with various revisions for like 10 years <laughs> or longer. Wow. I must have made like at least a couple hundred thousand dollars in royalties off of that. I probably owe Bob lunch or something. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, he, he, you know, but he was just generous. I'm like, well, what can I do? Can I pay you? No, 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 no problem. And then um, Don Hot, Hotman, I don't know if you remember him. Uh, he's probably long retired, hmm. but I used to meet him at some of the, uh, there used to be this newsletter publishers associations uh, meetings that I would go to every year down in DC. And he was a freelance copywriter who'd done work for Phillips. And I remember sending him a few things, you know, a couple times to crit and uh, give me feedback and. I'd send them like a nice gift or something or fruit, you know, fruit box or whatever, you know. And uh, so I had some people like that, that, you know, relying on the kindness of of good souls yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to help me out here and there. But for the most part, I was on my own. 
now you're paying it forward with the girls club. Yeah. And so to people, if I want to get in the girls club, I can't obviously, but no. uh, if I'm, uh, if I qualify, what do I do? I just search that on Facebook and request. Uh, yeah, make sure you go to the right girls club because there's some uh, some weird oh, ones. Yeah, there. <laughs> I think I've had a friend request or two from some of those other yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Russian women want you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so how how will they know if it's the right one? Will they see your well, your if, picture I or think what's the they icon? Search, uh, the girls club dot club. I, it has that little dot club on it. Okay. It'll come up. Okay. Um, but if they, you know, we had mentioned earlier, I do have a, a report that kind of. Oh, yes. My seven steps to uh, winning uh, control promotions. And it's, you know, it's a very much a kind of a summary, like, boy, like here's everything boiled down. You know, it's not like a 60 page report, but um, I think it's a really good synopsis of each step that you really want to take to if you and sometimes, you know, I have to, I've actually been guilty sometimes of skipping a step. Right. And then it's just not as strong a promotion. But if you do all mm-hmm. seven steps, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to have your odds are going to be greatly improved. Right. Of yeah. really having a strong promotion. So they can get that report, guys and gals, at the marketing superpower dot com. And then if you opt in, you'll get the report. And then you'll also get another email inviting you to join the girls club if you're one of the girls. So perfect. Um, so they'll be able to get to it that way as well. All right. And all these will be in the show notes at copychief.com forward slash CCR. But again, it's the, uh, the, the marketing super marketing superpower dot com. Dot com. Yeah. That's really the one place you need to go. And who wouldn't want this? Um, your seven steps. Uh, your seven strategies. Let's talk about those for a second. I mean, we obviously can't go through all seven. They need to go get the report. But how did you land on seven things? And do you look back and go, it's, wow, uh, so many of my uh, attempts would have become controls had I not been missing, you know, four or three or whatever? Well, okay, so here's kind of a funny story about the report. And if people do go to this this website, they're going to say, this is like, I mean, it's really a very simple, quick and dirty landing page I put up. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- this report I actually wrote back in 2009, and it, at around that time, you know, I was I had I mean that's when I wrote a lot of big controls. I mean, I have some that are still mailing, you know, seven eight years later, you know, that I wrote around that time. Um, but when I was interviewed uh, on Ben Settle's site last October, uh, I was asked, well, do you have some kind of free report you can offer? I'm like, well, let me see what I have. Mm-hmm. And then I found this report on my hard drive. It has been sitting there just, you know, gathering dust. And I realized how much hidden gold it had in this report. And then when I was looking at it more closely, like, where did I, you know, I was trying to remember, why did I even sit down and write this thing? Um Believe it or not, like back when I worked at Phillips Publishing and I was telling you about those early days when we had this group, we were tr- like doing all this copy for products to sell on the back end, you know, to the healthy direction or to the health and healing list. I actually had trained my colleagues, you know, on on copywriting because I like I said, I had developed a reputation as a, as a very good copywriter. And so this was part of the whole training I had done um, for my colleagues. And I had put all that in a report seven years ago and then unearthed it. And then I did some more updating, you know, for this current version. But so it's kind of this timeless, you know, encapsulation um, of a process that I've used that I think any good copywriter uses for their promotions. And um, so give me give give me one that uh, give us a light bulb out of the seven. What's one that gets overlooked? And it should be, you know, obvious to people. Well, I mean, there's there's definitely a couple, but I'd say the first one, we, you and I were talking about this earlier, know your product and market. And I'm talking about, you know, really, really spend time on that research because when you give that short shrift, it really shows. Yeah. And um, I know Marcella's talked to you about how she actually has customer avatars and she talks to real life people. And I think that that's huge. And I've done that. I've used that technique as well. Um, but, you know, part of it is just um, being a good copywriter is being able to ask good questions. Yes. Right. So, for example, I'm working, I'm actually teaming up with another copywriter to uh, write about it. This brand new launch, a very interesting and unique product. And we had an interview earlier today with the uh, the doctor behind the product who created it, 
And we had like, we spent a lot of time formulating 30 questions, 30, not like 10 or five. You know, they're all written out. We shared them in advance and we spent almost two hours on the phone Mm -hmm. uh, with this person. Um, And then the, the client who's worked on this product for the last two years, like nonstop, he's like, I learned, I learned things I didn't even know mm-hmm. <laughs> about this product. But yeah. see, that's the level. And we're, we were just like, we know there's still some things we want to go back and follow up on and ask more questions. But mm-hmm. that's, I'm just saying, you want to, you want to really, you want to know your, 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 the product you're writing about probably better than the client or, or at least as well as the person who invented it, you know? Yeah, totally. You know what yeah. I, I would say to um, freelancers is, you, you know, what's interesting. I don't know if you struggle with this ever at first, Probably not because you worked in marketing before, but there's almost like a shyness, you know, with with freelancers that, oh, I don't want to bother because it's oftentimes when they're not in a publishing model, uh, you're working directly with the product creator. Right. And yeah. you're saying, well, this is the person who hired me and I don't want to bother them. I know they're busy, but I say you need to be a detect. You need to be Columbo showing up at the golf club. <laughs> and like all the tennis courts and go, excuse me, there's one more thing, you know, <laughs> and like really like and, and they and they a good client appreciates that. Right. Yep, yep. And I love that Columbo and analogy. That's great. Uh, yeah. And for like, those of us old enough to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. I'm dating myself. <laughs> Some young uh, person is going to be Googling Columbo. You, what is that? Spelling it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Columbine. That's not. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> not the same at all. Um, and. <laughs> But um, uh, the, um, uh, the, you know, like John Carlton's uh, one-legged golfer uh, hook came from a discussion with a, with a client, interview with a client, 45 minutes into the call, and the guy would have swore he blew off the story. He's like, ah, everybody's heard the story a million times. There's a one-legged golfer, and the guy's shooting 300-yard drives, you know, straight as an arrow. And John goes, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and, you know, see, that's the thing. And I say, look, part of the value you bring to the project as a freelancer is at, by the end of that call, you hear things like what you heard today. Yeah. I, I learned things I didn't even know. Or yeah. <laughs> you, you reminded me why I created this thing in the first place. This is really important what we're doing here, right, you know? Right. Uh, and, 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 the, and the other great thing, as you know, I'm sure you've had this happen, is they practically give you a lot of your copy oh, for sure. you. Oh, sure, I mean, yeah. like you get, oh, my God, that just came out of this person's mouth. I wrote that down. That's our headline. That's almost like our big idea. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and this is how you, you uncover it. It's like looking for, for gold, you know, that hidden gold, and you just keep digging a little deeper or peeling that onion a little bit more. And you, and you get down to it. It's like mm-hmm. Clayton Makepeace. piece. I remember telling the story, you know, I, I talked about health and healing and what a successful launch that was back in the early nineties. Um, Clayton Makepeace piece wrote the launch promotion for that, that mailed millions and millions of names and helped was really, you know, instrumental in growing that newsletter circulation to, to such a huge, uh, base. And he went out to California where Dr. Whitaker lived and, Spent like a whole weekend with him, just getting to know him, interviewing him, going to his clinic in Newport Beach, et cetera, and just totally, you know, soaked up everything he could about the guy. And, yeah. you know, even getting the voice across because, you know, you're a lot of times you are writing in the voice mm-hmm. of that expert, that doctor, that editor, whoever. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's the kind of stuff you got to do. I mean, one of the most successful inserts I wrote when I was at Phillips Publishing in the first six months that I was there was for a – $395 air purifier. And we were like, how the heck can we sell an air purifier just in a little insert that rides along in the newsletter? Because they were used to selling like a $39 book or, you know, stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. So I flew, they flew me on a plane up to Buffalo, New York in the middle of January. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I, you know, I got to meet the owner of the factory that made them and tour the factory. And he took one apart and showed me how it was constructed. And, you know, they had the zeolite and the this and the that and, you know, what each of them did. And I knew that product inside and out. I probably could have built one if I had to. Yeah. And, and then I wrote the copy and, um, this thing did great. I mean, we sold, you know, all the, it was like a six page or eight page insert. And it was one of the first things I wrote when I went there and, uh, it was really a lot of fun, but it's because I really got to know the product. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the famous, uh, uh, Capo Diastro bar. I don't know if you know that story, but 
it's, you know, finding, digging, digging, digging until you find that one sort of magic moment, that thing that's going to make the product stand out and feel irresistible. Kind of like we think about the Schlitz beer campaign, right? Yep. Where, you yep. know, it's nothing that everybody else isn't doing. It's just that nobody's ever featured right. it before. A preemptive advantage, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yep. Excellent. So, uh, you know, you also, um, you talked about, you know, uh, it's copywriting is not enough anymore, right? You, you've got to be a great marketer. Um, and what I always say to people is... It, don't think of yourself as a copywriter. You are a marketing expert with copywriting as your specialty, right? Right. And so do you find that there's people who are, are neglecting the amount of marketing savvy they need to develop and it's holding them back in their career? Or do you think they go hand in hand these days? Well, I think, I think that if you're a good marketer, it's going to give you a lot of advantages as a copywriter. And I mean, Okay, I'll, I'll name a few. One is you're going to have much more, you're going to do a better job of trying to determine what the product USP is. Mm-hmm. Like you may not even know what a USP is, right? <laughs> if you don't know anything about marketing. And I think, you know, we yeah. all know that's a unique selling proposition, mm-hmm. right? What is that, you know, and that's, again, that's one of the steps in this report, you know, is establish uniqueness, you know, mm-hmm. and going through and how do you take those features? You know, like I said, I got to know this air purifier really well, but it wasn't like, Okay, it's got a speed three dial and it's got a zeolite filter. <laughs> like it was more like, okay, so you can or so it can, you know what I mean? Right. Unpacking um, it. You know, yeah. what does it do for you? You know, three speed dial so you control the flow of air, you know, or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, um, you know, translate those features into benefits. And, and this is something you learn to do as a marketing person. Um, I, like I said, I had 13 years of different marketing positions, everything from, you know, a publisher to being a brand manager. So, um, you know, these are all things that just come second nature to marketers, but maybe not to someone who had a a different career and then got into copywriting. Um, Had another example, and now I'm blanking out, but uh, USP is when, oh, here's another one that's crucial. So you're talking with the client and you're talking about, okay, we're going to write a promo and maybe there's going to be one test headline and blah, blah, blah. And then you get down to talking about the offer. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is where a lot of times they're looking for the copywriter to give them some guidance. I mean, they might say, well, here's what's worked for us, but, blah, blah, you know, or, but if it's like a new launch and they're starting from scratch, um, you know, you have a vested interest as a copywriter, especially if you've got some kind of royalty attached that you want your promotion to be successful, right? You want it to be as successful as possible. So if you understand offer strategy and can advise accordingly, you're going to give your promotion a better shot of success. You're also obviously going to help your client, um, you know, be more successful with their marketing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that, you know, again, working in a marketing position, working in a, working and helping to run a a $23 million supplement business, you know, when I was at Phillips, um, we were constantly coming up with new offers or should we try this or let's test that. And, you know, all that strategy that goes in has really helped me you know, to this day with every project that I work on with clients in terms of advising them on what would be the best offer strategy. Yeah. yeah. What would you say to somebody who's just starting out and they feel like, oh my God, there's so much to learn. This is all overwhelming. What's, what's the, you know, number one thing they could do almost as a daily habit to get good fast? Um, I mean, I think it depends on their situation. Uh, I had somebody who was kind of helping me out and I was coaching. He was kind of like like an apprentice, actually, a uh, really talented young guy. And I finally said to him, it's like, you know, you're still living in your parents' basement or whatever, you know. <laughs> and it, it might be a good idea, as much as I love working with you, and I, maybe go work for one of these big companies. Go work for a big direct, direct response company. I mean, I got a first, I got a world-class education and direct marketing, you know, working at Phil's Publishing early in my career. Mm -hmm. And that opened so many doors. So, I mean, I know this might go against the grain. I know everybody wants to be a freelancer, but depending on if you're just starting out, you know, why not, you know, get, get paid to learn, (laughs) you know? Um, So that's one avenue. Again, it's not for everyone, but I, yeah, but also that's a great point because freelancing isn't for everyone, you know, freelancing is not for everybody, mm -hmm. but you know, you can still want to be a freelancer someday, but Hey, put in your due somewhere. Just don't, don't sign any like non-competes, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, 
but like, yeah, so he, he went to go work for uh, Agora Financial and he's learning tons, mm -hmm. tons of stuff. And you know what? When he's ready to walk on and he's going to have so many connections, he will have built a reputation within the company as a good writer. Yeah. Like what helped me so much is like I left Phillips be like, oh, you used to work for Phillips? Um, let me hire you like now. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it had such a good reputation. So, you know, so that's one way. I mean, again, that's not for everybody. Another way, um, people have so many more advantages now than when I started out 19 years ago, I mean, there's there's what Copy Chief offers, which is an amazing community, right? Where you have people, I, from what I understand, Kevin, you guys, people can get advice on their copy oh, and yeah, you offer yeah. a lot of learning opportunities. Yeah, we're doing live critiques. It's, like, it's almost like a laboratory. It's like a marketing laboratory where yeah. people post stuff up, everybody weighs in on what they think the next test should be. They go mm -hmm. test, they report the results, and we all learn in real time what's working and what isn't. And that's... As you know, the best learning is like, well, what did the buyers think? <laughs> right. Um, and I would I would be remiss if I didn't say something about Ben Subtle and his email players, which I actually started subscribing to mm -hmm. uh, just a couple months ago. Um, and one of the things I love about his newsletter, and you know, I spent you know several years, as you know, at this major you know newsletter publishing company, I and mean, that's what Phillips was. You know, it's hundred million dollar you know publishing uh, newsletters. Ben really understands, you know, he can boil things down for you in like a 16 page newsletter that you could spend months trying to figure out on your own. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the purpose of a newsletter. And I like that he really, like, I think this last month's issue, he was talking about, you know, tying in some things with um, one of Gene Schwartz's um, concepts from Breakthrough Advertising. So he, he really goes back and he looks at, yeah. you know, the greats and he ties it in to things that you know you can apply today you know with email marketing but really to any kind of marketing so you know look for good people like that to learn from there's a lot of them like it and then of course there is AWAI which does um, from what I've seen you know have a pretty good decent you know I, I forget what it's like some six-figure accelerated I don't know what they call the copywriting course but I know a lot of other copywriters do feel that it's been very helpful and it's like there wasn't anything like that when I started out, right. like just a step to step course on how to yeah, do it. Yeah, you, 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 you could you could invest uh, five hundred dollars, you know, uh, and be on your way right now. Right. If you really you, you wanted could. to take advantage of newsletters that are out there, you know, copy chief alone, just just to give a shameless plug for a second. Honestly, like if you came in and went, started working through some of the archives uh and and did the trainings and the fact that i think immersion is a big part of it too right it's yes. uh, one thing to get information and have it be uh really useful but if you don't at some point get your hands dirty with it i i think it's just theory and we see like these so many people on facebook as these little poser experts uh, and if you scratch past the service, you realize this person's never even written a package. They've mm -hmm. never gone up against a control. They've never, you know, they just really haven't been in the trenches. It is, it is simple to get a quote unquote education. It is essential to get some practice, you know? Exactly. And then the question is, how do you get that practice? You know, you know, so you, you take on clients and maybe you're not, you're not making anywhere near the big money, but you're getting, you're getting yeah. some experience, you know, yeah, and that's, that's, I mean, yeah, don't, so. don't go crazy. Like don't sell yourself so incredibly right. ridiculously so, cheap. But I mean, I, I took on, I mean, I didn't have glamorous clients right out of the gate, you right. know, yeah. I mean, I even came out of Phillips. I had, you know, I worked on different stuff and, um, well, you that's, know, that's what you see with, with people who, you know, are going to be good in this industry because they, they more than anything. Yes. They, they need the money. They, you know, they want to earn money. They want to grow a business. But what they really want is results. They just want to see their stuff implemented and find out did it work or not, right? So they can learn because right. they know that they'll be learning this craft for the rest of their life. And they just want to get going with the real nitty. They know it, it may not be pleasant. It sucks to write uh, a, a failed package, right? It hurts. It's no or, fun. It's happened to everybody. It's, it's er happened. Right. And, and look – you and I know all the best writers, the legends in the in the business. Can you name one of those people who feels like they'll never bomb again? No. Never. I mean, I don't, I don't know personally how they're feeling, but I'll tell you, when I was at Phillips and when we worked with the very top copywriters, 
they're, they're they would sometimes fail. Sure. I mean, we had that happen, and it, sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes it was a product issue. It wasn't them. But sometimes, you know, a good copywriter will, when you're at that level, you know, sometimes you do want to take a big risk and sometimes it's not going to work well at all. Other times it's going to be a huge breakthrough. Right. You know, when you're just starting out though, and I learned this lesson kind of the hard way, I, the first, the first uh, um, chance I had to go up against Jim Rutz for that personal finance uh, promo that I, I mentioned earlier, yeah. um, I decided to take some crazy ass well, I'm going to come up with some fresh approach, right? <laughs> and I literally put a, a picture of like a Godzilla monster, like on the front cover. And it was something like the monster that ate the economy and, oh, you know, <laughs> and they actually, to their credit, they, they ran with it and it actually didn't do terrible, but mm. it didn't come anywhere close to beating Jim Rutz's package. And then about seven or eight months later, they said, well, let's give Kim another chance, right? Thankfully for that. And so I took a little bit more conservative approach. I'm like, well, what are some things that are working out there? Well, let's see. Let's try this issue log format. It looks a little more serious and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And boom, I beat Jim Rutt. So, you know, if you're just kind of starting out, you know, maybe you don't want to be uh, like cocky. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and say, I'm going to reinvent like the Magalog. Right. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you a question. And then, uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. And okay. I hope we could do this again. But um, – when you beat Jim Rutz or one of the legends, do you get a call? Do you get like the congrat congratulatory <laughs> call? No, no, nothing. No. I, I, that's never happened, and honestly, I don't think I've ever done that for anybody huh. else. Because a lot of times you don't even hear, and then you're like, "Wait okay. a minute, how come I'm not getting my royalty check?" Oh well. Oh, it's not an event, Mark really. Here, you think whatever. the the uh, the 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 publisher should be making that known so that you get to work tr trying to win it back, right? Um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, they, I don't know. They don't, they don't, I mean, there's not, there's not always that communication that would be great, but no, I never had a chance to talk with Jim Rutz and I know he passed away, you know, a couple of years ago. I never had a chance to meet him or talk with him, but I mean, I, I've been, I was always a huge fan of his copy and just, you know, yeah, but yeah it, that's not something that happens. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. a shame. That would be a cool little ritual, right? It'd be like, enjoy it. And I'm, and I'm, and you, it won't be long until I'm back. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Just a little good camaraderie. But uh, all right, Kim, this was great. Really appreciate you sharing all the insights. Uh, so the only place anybody needs to go to get, you're definitely going to want Kim's report, uh, themarketingsuperpower.com. Yep. Uh, if you are a, a lady, a girl, a woman who wants to uh, mimic some of, Kim's success, learn from her directly how she did it. Uh, I think it's awesome that you're providing that. You will get an email after you download the report inviting yep. you to come join that club and, and exactly. the proper links for that. So yep. uh, the marketing superpower.com. Go check out Kim, learn more, learn from her. Thanks and so much for sharing with us today. You're welcome. And then just, yeah, kimschwam.com if you just want to see my, my regular website, which is a good you know, example for any freelancers yes, out there. Yes, it's okay. great. You get your portfolio in there and the whole bit. Yep. All right. Awesome. Excellent. Thanks. We'll talk soon. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Take care. Hey, thanks again for listening to the Truth About Marketing podcast. If you like this show and you think other people would like this show, the best way to spread the word is by reviewing and rating the show in iTunes. Just log in, click review, leave a big old fat five-star review, and let everybody know that you dig the show so that they can dig it too. To get all the links and resources we mentioned on today's episode, please go to copychief.com forward slash TAM, as in truth about marketing. And if you'd like to uh, learn more about how you can improve your sales copy with uh, templates, formulas, coaching, feedback, or hiring a pro, do all that on the inside of the members area of copychief.com, and I will look for you there. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.